In today's DIY, we're nearing the end of our patio makeover. And Garth and I just want to add one teeny little extra thing in. And we're going to show you how to build a pot. Now, this is where it gets really cool. Because whatever you want, the size of it, however big or however small, you simply can do it. And it's as easy as that. Of course, most importantly, your first decision that you need to make is how big you're going to want to make your concrete pot. So, Garth, what are we going to do here? Tanya, all I've got is a 300 by 300 piece of board. Right. Just got to add on the edges. Right. Put a bit of releasing agent inside. Uh-huh. And we put our Gany mix in there and we're ready. Okay. So, just so that the viewers at home know exactly what we're doing, we are going to be making this, essentially, once we've finished making this boxing, is going to form one side of our concrete pot. So it might not seem like it's gonna turn out to be a pot right now, but just bear with us and you'll see exactly how it's gonna happen. So this is making one side. So if you can imagine, that's one side, that's one side, that's one side. There and there, yes, when you put them all together, you're gonna to have a concrete pot. So hang on there and we'll show it all to you in a few seconds. Right, so we've got that 300 by 300, that's what we're choosing. That's right, Tanya. Okay, now what's up? Now we just gotta, Hold it up. Okay. And we put the edges on. All right. Got it. Okay, last side on. So there we have it, one times box ready to go. Now of course, you could make it go a hell of a lot quicker if you made five of these because then you'd be able to remove five of your sides all at once. So depending on how adventurous you're feeling or how much patience you have probably, that will decide on how many of these. But right now, we've got one on the go, all ready, good to go. Next is the releasing agent. That's correct, Tanya. And what do you normally mix in there, guys? Oh, Tanya, you could use a bit of cooking oil and water. Okay. Or a bit of clean Indian oil. Okay. And you just got to paint it nicely. Mm-hmm. Make sure you get all the corners Make as sure well. Make sure all okay? the corners and the sides. And you know, this could also work, this guy over here, if you wanted to make your own pavers as well, because it's exactly the same concept, without, except you're not using a plastic mould or something like that. But, yeah, you could do that as well. Okay, now let's get our mixture ready. Um, what are we going to do? Tanya, we're going to use um, two part river sand mm -hmm. to one part cement, which is nice and strong. Okay, and we've got this jug here because we're only making one of these guys. Um, this is a 1 kg, so it's two of those guys and one of those. That's correct, Tanya. Okay. One of cement that we've got. Okay, in he goes. And then we do the mixing. I'll drop a bit of water in there, Garth, once it's mixed. A wee bit of water there. Oh, that looks good to go, hey? Yes, it's ready, Tanya. Okay, let's hit it. Uh, pop it into here. There we go. Okay, now all that you've got to do at this point is work it in. Remember, we've always spoken about the corners. That's the most critical part. So really work it into the corners because you don't want your paver to come out and have a hole stuck somewhere. The last thing you need. Once you've got it to the level that you're wanting, all you then need to do is just surf it, just level it out um, with either a plastic float or a wooden float, just so that we're getting the right levels and we've got it all smoothed out.
So there we have it. It's ready and good to go. All you've got to do is leave it for a couple of days, up to a week, that's max. And of course, once it's dried, all you do is unscrew the boxing and guess what you got? Take a look here. You're gonna end up with one of these guys, a perfect paver that we're now going to use. Of course, we've got five of these. We're now gonna use these to create a concrete pot. All right, so now we get to put the little guy together. Garth, this guy up first. We put the sides up first, is that right? That's right, Tanya. Okay, so we're gonna put him there. All right. Okay, and then we're gonna take this guy over here. That's correct. And we are using, remember this, just as a general tip, is that use the sides that all look the same because the bottom end of your boarding is going to have a different texture completely. You see that, like that? Okay, different texture. So, right, Garth, what are we using to stick this thing uh, with? We're gonna use a universal adhesive. Okay, and you can get it from your local hardware store. You can get store. it from your local hardware store. Right, okay, so I imagine that's just gonna go along the sides we're here. We're gonna smear it up there. Don't right, you? go for it. Excellent stuff. And of course, Wherever you're preparing and putting this thing together, make sure that you don't have to use that area for a while because you're going to need to leave it to dry there. So, um, yeah, just FYI. <laughs> okay, and together he goes. Ah, let's push him in. That's it. That's it. Scrape off any bits that you've got extra. Okay. There we go. Okay, fixed up. Continue building the planter by joining each side concrete slab at a 90 degree angle to the next. Make sure you use a generous amount of adhesive. Remember the concrete slabs are pretty heavy. You want to make sure they stick together properly. Mm -hmm. Wipe away any excess adhesive as you go along. Alright, so our four sides are now onto our pot and now we're going to be putting the base on. Now at this point, what I need to tell you is that when you are building your pots, you can either choose to have your base slightly larger. So in other words, your fifth mould that you're making can be slightly larger or it can be exactly the same size as the four that you've originally made. Okay, Garth, so on it goes. Okay, let's bring this baby. Sure, that's right. And yeah, that looks good. Get a little lip all the way around. And now all you do is wait for it to dry. Pot is dried and it's ready on the table for the best part of it all, which is of course the planting. We have drilled some drainage holes in it and you'll also notice that we've drilled some holes on the side. And you might be thinking, what on earth are you going to be doing that for? But I'm going to show you in a second. So. First up is that we put some pebbles in the bottom, which is going to aid for the drainage. And then in goes just some ordinary potting soil. All right. So in that goes. And now I want to fill the potting soil up to the first level where I've got the hole that's drilled in the side. Okay. So just squish that down. Now, you're probably wondering why we've got these holes drilled in the side. Well, what we're going to do is I'm going to plant those up and then it's going to look even more spectacular. So we filled up with a bit of soil up to the first level of where um, our first drill mark is. I'm going to take one of these echeverias that I got out the garden this morning. They're really tough so you can rip off all those roots, take off a few of these edge leaves. Remember you can always keep those and regrow them. And then all I'm going to do is take it like so, handle it gently and I'm just going to feed it through that hole that we've drilled. That's it, feed it through and voila. Huh? That makes it look different already. Got another one of these little guys, little Echeveria. And I'm just gonna pop him in here. There we go. And I'm gonna try something different in that corner. And I've got one of these guys. Ooh, also very nice pink Echeveria. Now remember, what we want is the stem. We need that long stem to be able to feed it through the side of the pot. So work it away. Try and find the stem. Here it is, it's in here somewhere. Aha! There we go. Pull away those roots because it is going to grow. 
and then take this little guy at some, and feed him in, right through there. Oh, oh, look how nice it looks. Fabulous. Okay, I'm gonna do the other side and all the other sides before I start planting in the middle because once you've done that, ah, oh, well, you know, it all just gets a bit messy. All I'm gonna do now is just fill up the rest of the pot ah, with the potting soil up to the level that I need. There we go. Squish it all down. Now, here comes the tricky part. I've chosen a pachypodium. Ha ha, this little guy here. Serious terrorist, look at all these thorns, okay? So, if you're wondering how on earth you manage to transplant such a beast, I will show you right now. All you need is an old dishcloth, and you're gonna do it like this. You're gonna take it, put it around it, and twist it, okay? As easy as that. Squish the pot, squish the pot. Pull the little boy out. There we go. And I'm gonna put him right here in the middle. Fill him up. Now he doesn't have much more, much soil, so I'm gonna kind of rest him there until I've put the rest of my plants around it, which will help to hold him up. But at this point, don't try touching anything. <laughs> um, you know when they say, don't do this at home. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see, I've got a beautiful collection here of some other bits and pieces. And remember, they're all gonna love the same grain conditions. So out they come, fiddle around with these roots a bit. And I'm gonna pop this little guy in right here. Uh-huh. That. Okay, in comes this little guy. He's gonna go in there, and this is where these little sticks are always handy to have because they help you to deal with those nasty little corners. Um, and of course, stay away from this guy. Unwrap him. Okay. Poke around with a little stick to make sure that you've got all the little corners filled up. Okay. And then I'm gonna put in my final plant. I've got this beautiful, area that's got these lovely curly leaves. It really is a stunner. Um, you'll notice that it absolutely has nothing over here. It has no stem, but you know what? These guys will grow. All you've got to do is just pop it on the surface of some soil and it will develop its roots. It's as simple as that. Oh, look at this beauty. Pop them over there. Clean off the edges. And how's that? for a concrete pot that might have looked pretty ugly in the beginning. And I have to say now, it's come alive. We've got living walls of pots. And of course, you can go wild. You could have taken this pot, drilled the holes in, and you could have fed some allison through or some lobelia, um, maybe even petunias that were billowing over the edge. And if you get bored with this, you just whip it out and put something else in. And it's as easy as that. Folks, till next week. Enjoy creating your concrete pots, do take care and happy gardening. The Gardener is proudly brought to you by PPC Cement.